So the, the hair cell <clears throat> in the vestibulum and the hair cell in the cochlea are very similar. Um, but they have a, they, they work very similarly, but they have a different appearance. This is a vestibular hair cell, and you can see that it has this, this big, robust uh, bundle, whereas in the cochlea, uh, there are three rows of, of stereocilia. This is a, a, a conical bundle. Um, and another difference is that the uh, vestibular hair cell has a structure called the kinocilium. The kinocilium is a organizational, a developmental, uh, developmentally present organizational stereocilia. It's the tallest uh, uh, stereocilia that is going to organize the rest of the bundle. Everything's going to be shorter than the kinocilium. In the cochlea, that kinocilium degenerates. It's present initially, but it, it, it disappears developmentally. And that's a good thing because it, it drags, it, it, it slows down the movement, and we don't need anything to slow down movement in the cochlea. But often the vestibulum, we don't really care if movement is slow because we have tens, if not hundreds of milliseconds uh, in which to, to make a response. So we can use the kinocilium as knowing that um, that's the tallest end of the hair bundle. And the way these hair cells work is that here's the kinocilium and all the other hair uh, stereocilia are shorter. And so this is just a cross section through a, a hair bundle, a hair cell with a hair bundle. And what you can see is that, the, that this kind of cilium gives us an orientation for the hair cell. Any movement of the hair bundle towards the kind of cilium, in the direction of the kind of cilium, will be excitatory. It will de depolarize the hair cell. Any movement away from the kind of cilium in this direction will hyperpolarize the hair cell. This is completely oriented so that if one moves in and out of the plane orthogonal to the kinocilium, we're not moving towards the kinocilium, uh, then there is no response. Okay, So no response orthogonally. This is completely directional. It either goes this way or it goes that way. OK. So that is going to allow us what we're going to see in the next video, but we're not going to go there quite yet. What we're going to see in the next video is that the point of the whole vestibular apparatus is to align uh, these accelerations, these head accelerations, so that they produce forces in an aligned way and they act on hair cells that are all lined up in the same way. Okay? So we'll get to that in a minute. But what's the effect of that is that you can diagram an entire semicircular canal sensory apparatus by just one hair cell, because all the hair cells are oriented in the same exact way. And what happens is that, uh, and you can see that here. So all the cells are oriented in the same way. The kind of cilium is all in one, on one side. And in the resting state, the, the uh, hair cells are at rest. There is a resting uh, membrane potential, which is around negative 50 millivolts. And at this resting membrane potential, there is resting release of neurotransmitter from this uh, hair cell, which excites these vestibular afferents. So there's resting discharge in these vestibular afferents. And that means that regardless of whether the, the hair cells are deflected, the hair bundle is deflected in the preferred direction or the non-preferred direction, there can be a response. So if it's in the preferred direction, there will be a depolarization. If it's at rest and then it's in the hyperpolar, it's in the non-preferred direction, there will be a hyperpolarization, less neurotransmitter release. Okay, so that's the way that we're going to get from the hair cell response to the brain. And now what we're going to do is look and see how the um, the sensory uh, uh, end organs are organized in the vestibulus. <laughs>